Nina Kulagina was born on the 30th of July in 1926 in Leningrad. To say the least, her life was difficult during those turbulent years of the early Soviet rule, when the new regime was still trying to solidify its grip over the country. However, just as the things have started to show glimpses of stability, a new challenging chapter of her life has begun with the start of the Second World War. In 1942, at the mere age of 15, she was conscripted into the tank division of the Soviet military, where she was often injured and passed long periods of time without food, water and the needed medicine. As a result, she has developed several disabilities regarding her movement. After the war, she became one of the most prominent members of the veterans of the 268th Division and enjoyed several years of relative peace. This was when she allegedly began experiencing strange events, which led to her awakening paranormal abilities. Truth be told, she never fully recovered after the war and was often seen visiting and staying at the hospital ever since. It was precisely during one of those stays when the nurse has realized that Kulagina was able to tell about things and events which were occurring in the hospital corridor to the extreme detail without ever exiting the room, as if she could see through the walls themselves. Another peculiarity noticed by the nurse was that Kulagina was subconsciously able to select her desired thread colors for her knitting session without even looking at what colors were available inside the basket. This fact is one of the most notorious since it was the most observed, as knitting was one of Kulagina's favorite hobbies. The rumors about such abilities were largely ignored in the beginning until they eventually started to be confirmed by her husband, close relatives and her friends. She apparently was not shy to show such small miracles to anyone who asked. And for a while these private displays were getting unnoticed until mid-1960s when according to a rumor some top Soviet officials have developed a keen interest in what she could do. Coincidentally, in 1966, she was convicted for fraud by the court of Leningrad. According to the procurator Sergei Solovyov and the prominent journalist Matvey Medvedev, her fraud consisted of gathering a substantial amount of money by impersonating someone who could obtain rare furniture from the black market. And on top of all that, she was also considered guilty for passing off her magic tricks as genuine paranormal powers. Needless to say, that was quite a heavy verdict in the USSR. With accusations like that, she could easily be in jail for most of her life, which in fact she was, but not in the way that we would normally imagine. In reality, she was studied from the mid-1960s until 1987, the last stable years of the Soviet Union. Over 25 laboratories from various fields of science were involved in the study of her phenomena with top scientific minds of the time being directly invested and with most of the research being conducted in Leningrad and Moscow. Curiously, her abilities were publicly criticized as fraudulent, yet only the top scientific establishments were allowed to come anywhere near her case, such as the Bechterov Psychoneurological Institute and the Moscow Institute of Radio Engineering and Electronics, the same institute that played the main role for creating the equipment to receive signals from the Sputnik 1 and known for their epic work on the creation of the planetary radar. Around that time, the first black and white movies of her abilities were made. There was no sound and they were quite eerie in their atmosphere. In those tests, she could be seen manipulating small objects covered by the layer of glass and stopping Frog's heart with her eyes. This being one of her last videos could mean that her abilities and control over them has improved drastically over the years under the scientific surveillance. Admittedly, these videos were made during the height of the Cold War and could have been nothing but hoaxes to make the other side of the Iron Curtain believe that the USSR has tapped yet into another unexplored territory, with the space exploration being the previous one. Luckily, there is a brief scientific interview where she is asked about how is she able to manifest her abilities. And, according to her, she needed a solitary time to prepare. The first step was deep relaxation and smooth rhythmic breathing. And finally, the concentrating her mind. I found this in particular very interesting, since I logically imagined that a high level of concentration was needed for such feats, not only in the paranormal area, but in any sport or professional process. 
However, it made me think of Sistema, since in Sistema they also say that the body and the mind are basically one and the same, and to achieve mental relaxation we can start off by relaxing our body and vice versa, by calming our mind, our body also enters into the relaxed and flexible state. And ironically, it's precisely the process of concentration that makes our mind and body tense, rigid and one-dimensional. Many people are ignoring the concepts of deconcentration and very little research is actually done, but I believe that there is something buried in there, but it has to be approached in the right way. And apparently Kulagina was using deconcentration to manifest her abilities, but after performing such feats, she often experienced a strong and sharp pain in the region of her lower spine, as well as prolonged periods of blurred vision. As a result, she never was able to use her abilities for a long period of time and needed a considerable time to recover. Apart from moving objects, some of her most impressive abilities were increasing or decreasing the body temperature of humans and animals and leaving burnt marks on objects and animals after a touch. Of course, it's very hard to tell what kind of experiments precisely she was going through during the 20 years of research, but we can say for sure that only a few of them were made publicly open after the collapse of the Soviet Union. During the last years of experiments that were conducted from 1981 to 1982, Yuri Kobzaryov, the leading Soviet specialist in the field of radio engineering and radio physics, the founder of the Radio Location Research School in the USSR and the head researcher of the Moscow Institute of Radio Engineering and Electronics, claimed that there is a strong electrical field emanating from her body, and by using an ultra-sensitive microphone, they have detected short ultrasound impulses from her palms. And after the short clips of experiments were seen in the West, it created a massive division in opinion, with the skeptics openly calling it a Soviet hoax, and the enthusiasts of the paranormal calling her one of the most talented psychics in the world. The clips with her performance have gathered the most amount of interested followers in Japan, where her phenomena reached a rather short-lived, but a considerable popularity nonetheless, which unfortunately Kulagina was not able to enjoy for herself. In the final years, with the softening of the Soviet regime, she was finally set free in the late 1980s, and in 1987 she took to the court the people who kept her in such conditions. And she achieved a partial victory, however, soon after that, she unfortunately passed away at the age of 63. After her death and the collapse of the Soviet Union, she has started to be openly blamed for fraud, with Russian government calling her tricks as illusions, and that she cleverly placed magnets and other peculiar gadgets to achieve such effects. We might never learn the truth regarding her abilities, but what we know to a degree of certainty is that she was not an average person, to say the least. The Soviet research into neurology and human psychic capabilities have greatly contributed to the development of training designed for the elite soldiers, Olympic-level athletes, and possibly Sistema Kalashnikova. Since many of his teachings placed a huge emphasis on deconcentration, and his techniques were designed on psychologically forcing his opponents into performing moves that he wished them to do, making them trapped into their own mental box. In the next video, we will look at another style of Sistema called Is War. We will see how it works, we will see its history, and we will rank it up against other prominent styles. So until then, remember to stay strong, stay healthy, and to never neglect knowledge. Peace out!